Uh, welcome in to another SE check-in. Today we are talking with Roland Fanning. Roland uh, played here from, I believe it was 2000 or 2001. Played two seasons, uh, stepped in as an assistant coach under Coach Matheny, and, and really has lived the southeastern life as a uh, student. Has spent several years here um, before going on and coaching at Oklahoma State and Kentucky. Uh, Roland, just first of all, how are you doing in quarantine or, or is shelter in place? Yeah, hey, Matt, thanks for having me. I think uh, you guys doing this is, is really, really cool. I think it's awesome you guys are connecting with alumni and appreciate your time. Um, quarantining, man, I'm good. I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I was, I'm, I actually am, am enjoying it. Um, I, I hate the fact that we're not playing baseball or, you know, we're kind of on pause here, but I'm getting to spend a lot of time with my wife and my two girls um, that maybe I wouldn't have, or, you know, my wife's seen me more the last seven, seven months than she has the last seven years. So um, the fact that I'm getting to uh, spend some more time with my girls, um, I, I'm going to take it. I'm not going to complain about it one bit. Um, you know, as I was talking to you earlier, you know, having to quarantine and corral my girls inside the house, it's kind of like uh, trying to guard Michael Jordan in the NBA finals. It's, it's uh, almost impossible, but it's a lot of fun. Um, finding, the, finding the glass half full, trying to embrace the moments with my family, uh, especially because I know how, how much uh, we, we're gone. So this has been, this has been a good thing. Well, let's get back in the way back machine for a minute and talk a little bit about when you made the choice to come to Southeastern and your, you know, your, your playing days early here. Yeah, to be honest with you, I rode the coattails of Bernardo Estrada, Sean K. Wood, Brent Wadley, Dallas Vanderford. Um, we were at NOC Enid, and Coach Matheny was recruiting those guys, and just so happened I was, I was a, a redshirt freshman on that team at, at Enid, and uh, those guys were really good players. And um, he was recruiting them, and I just happened to have a love for Southeastern from – my days being at Colgate when my uh, my grandfather was really, really tight with Doc Parm and my Aunt Brenda would, went to school there and would drive me to basketball games. Kind of why I'm wearing the uh, the Savages jersey because that's kind of how the the uh, my path to Southeastern started. Uh, but, yeah, so those guys chose to come to Southeastern, and over that summer we're playing a, in a baseball uh, league tournament there in Durant, and um, Coach Matheny um, offered me a, an opportunity to come play there, and uh, shoot, we, it was the best three years of my life that turned into another another five as, as a coach. So, like I said, I mean, uh, I that's kind of how I got there. Like I said, if not, I'd have been going back to Enid, and Lord knows where I'd have been uh, after that. But, no, I, I, I followed those four guys down there. We lived together, and, um, and the journey began. Well, you know, not only did you play, but as we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about you rocking the Savages jersey. You embraced the culture of the athletic department and the school as a whole. And that, you know, it, during your playing days, it was common to see you at every other event, uh, cheering on all the teams. Talk a little bit about what it meant as a family as a whole, being a part of the department. Yeah, I always had the mindset, and I've had this mindset everywhere I've been, but lucky, luckily, you know, at a young age, like big times, Big time was where I was at, right? So when I was at Southeastern, um, I grew up going to the Southeastern games and watching the ECU Southeastern rivalry, right? Even though I was a huge, maybe OSU supporter or fan, even growing up, but like I wasn't going to school there. This was my version of that, right? This was, so I was going to be embraced in that in, in, in every area I could. And luckily, you know, when we were baseball players there, our jobs were to work other events. Well, you know, especially when you're a student athlete, you interact with the volleyball team, the football players, basketball, whatever, right? Um, but not, but growing up, I remember going to Southeastern games and Crystal Robinson playing basketball and that place being standing room only, or some of the teams coach Robinson had, right. That were just legit. And everybody, once again, standing room only, I remember the band being, uh, packed with area being packed with student athletes. And so, um, you know, when, when I, when I went to school there, I wanted that for my experience. So luckily enough, we had a crew that kind of embraced that as well. And we would just, we would just get amped up and, and get ready to go, uh, actually give the opposing team, whether it was a men's game or a women's game, was about as hard a time as possible. And uh, that came with some maybe maybe getting asked to leave and maybe getting a coke thrown on you by some other uh, opposing team, whatever, right? But we didn't care. Our, our, our teams loved it. The coaches loved it. Uh, Dr. Hale was the, uh, the athletic director then, and he loved it. So 
um, yeah, we, we had a great time. And like I said, I, I, some of my best memories, I mean, were, were being a, a fan, was being a heckler, being, you know, with the boys and, and uh, getting basketballs thrown at us by East Central. Like that, that was, that was fun for us. Like we were, we were trying to get under people's skin and uh, we were pretty good at it. And like I said, I just, I just think that you have to have the mindset of, uh, you know, big times where you're at, be appreciative of what you have and, uh, and have fun no matter where you are. So I think we, we did a good job of that. Well, that segues into my next question that I've, that I've asked everybody so far. Just a memory from back then, either when, in your playing days or maybe in your uh, cheering days of uh, your time here at Southeastern. Oh, shoot. There's, I mean, there's some of them I can't even tell on this, on this interview, <laughs> but, um, you know, whether, it, whether, it, I don't, I, I don't know where to start on that one. I mean, uh, probably a fun one was, I think we were playing maybe East Central and, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, you know, we was in the basketball arena and, and we, we might've heckled a, a women's basketball team way too much. And a, and a mother literally came over with a large Coke and dumped it right on my head. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, she got ejected and I got a standing ovation and that was cool. I mean, you know, watching, watching, you know, um, Drew Beard and, and those football teams coach Baxter had back in the day. Um, uh, Romar Crenshaw, those guys played. That was, that was super fun watching those football games being sold out. Um, you know, and then, you know, our, our, our baseball team, uh, teams were good. We had, we had, a, we had a good group. Um, you know, the camaraderie we had, the off the field what memories are what really stands out. You know, the, the baseball is one thing, but like we had a pretty cool group. We, you know, if we weren't playing baseball, they were always over at our house and, uh, hanging out and having fun. And, um, you know, I, I think just for me growing up with the Doc Palmer and, and being around those those men around Southeastern, um, those are the relationships is, are probably what I, I remember the most. Moving on from then into your coaching career, what, what was it like to step into coaching under Coach Matheny, somebody you'd played for, somebody that had, by the time you came along, a legendary status, aside from the nickname, Legend. Yeah, yeah the legend, the one, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's like the Ric Flair of college baseball. He's like in every Hall of Fame possible. Um, so, yeah, you know what? It was a great opportunity. He, you know, he showed a lot of patience and grace probably with a, with a young head coach or a young assistant coach who, who, you know, at one time, you know, I, I wanted to be at Southeastern the rest of my life. I wanted to kind of hopefully replace him one day and, um, because that was my version of the Yankees. Um, um, you know, and he, he allowed me to do a lot of things. He taught me about recruiting. He taught me about, you know, working the field. He, he had a system for everything. As you know, he, he'd be stubborn about some of the things that he wanted to do, which I probably look at more now and understand why he was that way. Um, you know, but yeah, it was a great opportunity. I'm super thankful um, to be able to, to kind of work with and learn from um, arguably maybe the best small college baseball coach of all time. And um, yeah, it was, it was different. It was different going from playing to, to coaching. It was like, it was like almost like a, ultimate switch in personalities from how he would handle me as a player versus as a coach. Like he kind of had me on a, on a leash as a player and then let me loose as a, as a coach. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm definitely not where I am um, today if I didn't have those five years of coaching there. And, and to be honest with you, I think a fun stat is outside of Doc Parm and outside of Coach Matheny, I don't know how many years Coach Crabtree has been there, but I think I've, I've been associated with Southeastern baseball uh, right behind Coach Matheny and, and Coach Doc Palm. I think I'm like third between three years of playing and five years of coaching. That's eight years. So I've got eight years of Southeastern baseball in my belt. I think that's third all time. So that's that's one of my, uh, my my stats there for you. The rough math checks out. Yeah. Well, so you go on from working for Coach Matheny. You take a job at Oklahoma State, and, and you start coaching at the next level. And the question I have for you is, what, what kind of – what comes with a change in coaching at Division II where, like you said, you spend a lot of time working on the field and, and, and you do a little bit of everything to jumping up to a, to a, you know, a Power Five conference level program? Yeah, you know, it's something that it's something that when you're at Southeastern, you're always you always wonder, you know, if you're ever gonna get that shot or that opportunity. And um, you know, I was I was young, I was hungry. Um, I just got engaged to my 
fiance, now wife, um, and, and, and Bev. Um, so I was, I was all locked in on being at Southeastern. We just bought a house. It was like, you know, and then boom, a week later, I get the call. You know, uh, Coach Holiday gets the job here, and he calls me, and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I've got to try it, right? So the, the jump was more you go from, like, being the big fish and kind of maybe a smaller pond at that time because we'd just come off the, the Lone Star Conference Championship um, in year four, and then my fifth year there, we, we were second uh, in the league in the GAC. Um, and then, you know, it was like, okay, well, I can do this, right? You, you, I, you can do this. So I go to Oklahoma State, and it's like, whoa. It's like the competition, the recruiting. It's like you don't just know, like, the area within five, five uh, hours. You better know the radius in five states um, across the country. Um, you know, it's, it's just different. The competition is just higher. The, the, the you know, what's on the line is, is a little bit – the stakes are higher, and it is. And uh, that was fun for me. That was – the first year was really hard. It was really hard to try to find myself as a coach and going from only working with one person to working with five and having a full staff. And But, I mean, you know, the experiences are unbelievable as far as just, you know, working with the people I've got to work with, meeting the people that walk through these doors, some of the legends of college baseball. You know, that, that part was it, was – it was almost like the stories you would hear growing up or stuff you'd see about Pina Cabello, Robin Mature, Gary Ward, um, Tom Holiday. Um, I mean, and now to be working with Josh and Matt and Robin Mature and Rob Walton and Mario Lee, guys who have um, coached Team USA, won national championships, won World Series, you know, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's just been – it's different. It's still – at the end of the day, if you, if you take all the stuff off, it's still baseball. I mean, the one thing that Southeastern has in common with Power 5 school is that we both have home plates. We both have a mound 60 foot 6 inches. We all – both schools have three bases, and we have an outfield fence and uh, power poles. So when you get down to the bare bones of it, there's – it's still baseball, right? And so, um, yeah, it, it was. It's it's been awesome. My journey through college baseball has taken me places. A kid from uh, Lehigh slash Colgate, Oklahoma, uh, that that never would have dreamed of, of this. Um, I, I said this game's taken me to all over the country, man, and I, I can't. Um, and it started really because of my 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 start at Southeastern. Well, and then we'll close out with this and we started doing these check-ins because of uh, everybody sheltered in place and, and the change in work and things like that. Um, talk a little bit about how the, the, the current situation with the coronavirus has affected what you've been able to do coaching wise and what the expectations are and the methods you use uh, to do what you got to do currently. First, I think you have to break it down to kind of the three areas and like how are you helping them as student athletes, how are you helping them, helping them academically. Right. So they, they get their eligibility back. That's good. So, okay, what's next? Like we're not going to play baseball. Right. So you got to have to change your mindset. Let's not complain about the situation. All right. How do we make the situation better for our, our team? Well, first, are they going to, are they going to class? Are they doing their zoom meetings? Are they doing their, their online class? Are they checking in with their tutors? We basically become the best online academic service team um, there is. And I say that because we literally check in with these guys every day, every other day. Um, our, our, our academic service team is absolutely incredible. So we're, basically we're just making sure the student athlete academically is excelling, not just trying to hold on, right? We want these guys to be thriving, um, making sure mentally, you know, that, hey, they're not playing baseball. They're not around their friends. They're not living here. They're not together. Making sure they're, they're okay mentally and, and, you know, just – still locked in to not maybe maybe either going to depression mode or going to hey, I'm not doing schoolwork mode, just just consistently checking in and making sure they're okay. I think that's important. It, you know, you talk about the relationships on the on the, uh, the recruiting side, how we're going to do all this and that. Well, times like this, man, it, it really, I think it divides you as, are you are you doing what you say you're going to do or are you just saying it just for eyewash, right? Um, I feel like we've done a really good job of connecting with our players. So when the academics are good and the kid mentally is good and doing what he's supposed to. Um, you know, I think the, the next part is, is is trying to make sure we can we can just at some point give these guys a, the best um, uh, idea of when we can maybe come together. And if that's in the fall, it's in the fall. If it's um, whenever that may be. But you know, I think the biggest thing is for these guys just to make sure they're they're academically sound here in about another week or so. That sounds good, uh, Roland. Let's close out. Uh, anything you want to say to the Southeastern friends and family that might be 
tuning into this? Oh, I mean, look, I, I, I owe so much to Southeastern and Bryan County. Um, like I said, I met my wife there. I married my wife on campus. Um, I grew up, I grew up in, uh, in Bloomer Sullivan Gymnasium, which is now getting turned into an awesome facility for volleyball and, and the rest of sports. Um, I just, I think what Coach Baxter and the rest of the administration there are doing is, is, is awesome. They've done more there in, in a short time than maybe ever. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just thankful. I'm, I'm thankful to, to be around a lot of people down there who showed me the, the way to serve others. And I think that's led me into situations that maybe I wouldn't have gotten in, unless, you know, I think just being able to, to learn from great people. And that goes from the people that were up on the Hill and administration at the time when I was there to, to working in the admissions office to, um, you know, being in, in the snake pit there in Bloomer to being at a football game in the end zone on the couch to, um, you know, um, playing, playing college baseball at, one of the most prestigious uh, small college programs in the country. So very lucky, very thankful. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of great memories there. Um, every time we get a chance to go back, uh, we do it and try to see people. Got a lot of friends there, and, and we miss them. We, we, that's the one great thing about being back at Oklahoma State. We get to uh, we get to kind of see some people that maybe we hadn't seen before or maybe seen in a while. So uh, like I said, uh, big time's where you're at. If you're at Southeastern, it's your big time. Treat it that way, respect it, and uh, be the best student athlete you can. And make sure you graduate. Well, thanks for checking in with us, Roland. Uh, wish you guys the best. Stay safe, and uh, you're welcome to come back anytime. Matt, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, and like I said, you guys stay safe, okay? Hey, go Savages. <laughs> Bang. <laughs>